Sergei Prokofiev wrote a beautiful symphony called Peter and the Wolf. There are seven characters in Peter and the Wolf. Each character in the story is represented by a different instrument in the orchestra. For instance, the bird by the flute. The duck by the elbow. The cat by the clarinet. Father by the bassoon. The wolf by the French horn. The Hunters by the Kettle Drum. And Peter by the Violin. Each of the instruments in this story also comes from a different family in the orchestra. While there is only one instrument representing the string, brass, and percussion families, there are many woodwinds in our story. This is Peter's story. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into a big green meadow. On the branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. Soon, a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. The little bird flew down on the grass, sat down next to the duck, and said, What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly? The duck answered, What kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? And dived into the pond. They argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond and the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, a cat came crawling through the grass to catch the bird. Look out! shouted Peter, and the bird flew up into the tree. Just then, Grandfather came out. He was upset when he saw Peter in the meadow. It's a dangerous place. A wolf could come out of the forest. What would you do then? But Peter did not listen to his grandfather. Boys like Peter are not afraid of wolves. Grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. At that moment, a big gray wolf came to the forest. The cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked and jumped right out of the pond and tried to run, but she could not escape the wolf. He got her and with one gulp, swallowed her whole. And this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch, the bird on another, not too close to the cat. And the wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate watching over all that was going on. Peter climbed over onto the tree and said to the bird, Fly down and circle over the wolf's head. 
Only take care that it doesn't catch you. The bird almost touched the wolf head with a wing. How the wolf wanted to catch the bird. But the bird was clever. And the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. Peter made a lasso and caught the wolf by the tail. The wolf began to jump oddly trying to get loose. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. On and on went the struggle between Peter and the wolf. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods following the wolf's trail and shooting as they came. Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot! Bertie and I have already caught the wolf. Now help us take him to the zoo. And now imagine the triumphant procession. Peter at the head, and after him the hunters leading the wolf. Winding up at the procession, Grandfather the cat. Grandfather shook his head and grumbled. Well, and if Peter hadn't caught the wolf, what then? And if you listen very carefully, you can still hear the duck quacking about the pond, for the wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed her alive.